Hey there everyone, Daniel Lauer here with Anti-Siphon Training and we're back doing another Flash CTF challenge from Meta CTF. This one does come from the February of 2025 Flash Challenge. And it's called Cookie Crackdown. Cookie Crackdown, that's right. No more cookies. You and the cookies. Obviously it's not the tasty treat that we all love and enjoy and grew up watching a big blue monster. Uh, lose his mind over. No, no, these are the cookies inside of your web browser that websites used for all sorts of intents and purposes, some better than others. And maybe every now and then we go, you know, I don't like a cookie. I don't want a cookie. Cookie bad. I'm going to say no. You get the little pop-ups, right? Let's take a look at the challenge, shall we? Here it is, cookie crackdown. Here's the problem. We're auditing some websites to check if they're GDPR compliant. Uh-oh. And I'm pretty sure this site, obviously there is a, a little link there. So if you want to click on that, you can. It says this site isn't, isn't what, isn't GDPR compliant when it comes to their cookies. And that es no bueno, right? That is not what we want. If you're doing some sort of audit, obviously security is an important thing. And that's why you're here. That's why you like doing this kind of stuff. And there are laws and regulations about how cookies must be handled and worked with. And specifically, this one is citing the GDPR, right? The uh, uh, European, the EU version of this is what you must and must not do with your IT systems. Let's go take a look at that. I actually went and looked it up. Here is the GDPR uh, cookie compliance area. It's fairly straightforward. There's actually more to it than, than this as far as like definitions and things of that nature. So I actually would recommend you go here. It's just at HTTPS. It's right up here. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll grab this. I'll copy, and that way you can see it really well. Open up this thing here, and and we will just kind of paste it in. Da -da 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 -da. There it is. GDPR.eu forward slash cookies. Easy. I like that's so small and simple. Don't you love that? That's that's great stuff. So there it is. That's where you need to go. I don't need to save that. You don't need to save that. You know where it is now. And there's this area called cookie compliance. And it does say some fun stuff. Let's get into here a little bit to where you can actually see things. Cookie compliance. Okay, thank you. It says, oh, you dirty dog, you. Oh, control F. <laughs> cookie compliance. There we go. Find that section. And it says, for like the third time, to comply with regulations governing cookies... Under GDPR and the e-privacy directive, you must, and it says, receive user's consent before you use any cookies except strictly necessary cookies. Strictly necessary cookies, right? It says that you must provide accurate and specific information about the data each cookie tracks and its purpose in plain language before consent is received. Document and store consent received from users. Allow users to access your service, even if they refuse to allow the use of certain cookies. Right, So you can't tell them, you, you can't come. You didn't like my cookies. I'm not letting you in. You can't do that. And then make it easy for users to withdraw their consent as it was. So it has to be as easy as it was for them to give the consent as it is to withdraw it right? in the first place. So fairly straightforward stuff. We get it, right? Okay, I, you got to ask for consent for cookies. Uh, for anything that's not a strictly necessary cookie, uh, I must make it easy for them to uh, withdraw their consent and make it as easy as it was for the, them to give consent. There must be a pop. There must be this. You must document and store consent. There's just a handful. Of, what was it? Five things. Fairly simple. <clears throat> According to what we saw here, they're saying that we're doing an audit of some websites to look for compliance, and they're pretty sure that this site is not compliance. Okay. So how do we how do we find this out? This is well, good news is this is very beginner friendly. It's a very simple, straightforward challenge. Is it grabbing a cookie or giving me a cookie even when I say no? Right? That's what we're gonna look and see. Now I've clicked the link and it does pop up here. This is what it looks like. I've I've only, the only difference that you're gonna see is that my site is a little bigger and I make that so that you can see what is going on on my screen. But if you're following the bouncing ball on your screen. You should see this, but probably much smaller. And it says, we're using a cookie, whether you like it or not, but it does have a flag. So like I said, very beginner friendly, uh, help you understand where cookies are and how you can get access to them and things of that nature. It says declining makes you feel better, 
but it doesn't actually stop the cookie from existing, which is a violation of GDPR. If I click decline, unless it is a strictly necessary cookie, right? And I believe that's what it did say, right? Let's go back. It says right here, receive user's consent before you use any cookies except strictly necessary cookies. So I'm assuming what they mean here is that this is an unnecessary cookie that they're going to give you anyway. Ha ha ha. <laughs> Nothing you can do. You don't tell me, I tell you kind of thing. So if I click accept, yeah, I'll take the cookie. I get the cookie. But even if I click decline, I should get this cookie. Okay, let's click decline. Decline it is. Hey, look, I'm in my I'm in my browser. I'm doing browser things. Look at the cookie crackdown challenge. It's a lot of fun. I got macaroons. I got what looks like a chocolate chip, maybe a peanut butter or oatmeal, something like that. I love the cookie. Delicious. Okay. But how do I find out whether or not I've got a cookie here? Okay, well, there's a couple of ways you can do it. The easiest way is just going to use the, the browser tools. I am using Firefox. I'm a Firefox user. I am not a, right? This is Firefox. Yes. <laughs> Making sure that I had the right browser. I do use Brave from time to time. But uh, to get to your browser tools or your, your developer tools, should I say, in, in the Firefox browser, it is Shift-Control-I. Shift-Control-I. And that brings up these tools. And I much prefer the way that Firefox does stuff. Anytime I need to pull up dev tools, I'm almost invariably going into uh, Firefox to do something. Uh, but it's not the only way to do things. You can obviously go to tools and look for browser tools right around there. And then look for those developer tools right there. Developer tools and bam, it pops up. If you're using another browser, your mileage may vary on how this works, but it's going to be something similar where you're going to have to go into the settings area. Do I have Brave on this, Kali? I don't think I do. Bra not Brace. Brave. Brave. No Brave. All right, so I don't have Brave installed. I don't have Chrome installed. What are you going to do? I, I, this, is, this is kind of like a, a, a fairly clean install of Kali, and it only comes with Firefox by default. So that's what I'm rolling with. But... Find your developer tools and open them up. Once we have that in here, look for something called like storage. And in storage, ooh, it's so, so small. You can see there's an area that says cookies. And guess what it's storing in the cookies area? Any cookie. And oh, look, there is a name of a cookie called flag. And there is a value. Oh, man. That sure looks like a flag that we're used to, this meta CTF. And it says, non-consensual cookie crackdown. Yep. And if you want to, you can just double click on the value, right click, copy, and then paste that in and solve the puzzle. That's one way of doing it. It's a fairly simple, straightforward way. You already have the tools built into your browser. Again, if you're running uh, like Brave or Chrome or some, some other browser, you just have to find out where you're, how to get your browser tools up, do that, and then find the, the storage area. Where is it storing cookies? And you can bounce through. I would highly recommend actually kind of bouncing through a lot of the different stuff to see what all these things are. If you're new to this, this is a beginner-friendly challenge. So this might actually be very new to you, and that's totally cool. While you're here, take a walk around, you know? flip some buttons, click some dials, you know, do things and look and see what is this and what does it do? Kind of get some information because having some familiarity with that is going to help you out in other ways. You could also use a tool like Burp Suite or um, Z Attack Proxy. Um, these things will help us do it. I've got Burp Suite. I'm running college. I could do it with Burp Suite. Let's, you want to take a look at that? Why not? What the heck? Let's do it. Show you another way. Now, of course, I have... Uh, a, a, a tool called Foxy Proxy, which helps me do this, right? I've got this thing where I can easily turn my proxy on or off for the browser. Otherwise, you got to like go into the settings and you've got to find where that area is. I think in Firefox under privacy and security. And then you got to scroll and look for, uh, is, this, is this where they're doing it now? Uh, you know what? I'd use Foxy Proxy so much that I don't remember where they're putting the proxy, but of course you can always search for like proxy settings and look network settings right there, hit settings. And then you can say, Hey, use the system 
settings, which is what I have it set for. So I can use Foxy proxy. I can say no proxy. I can manually set the proxy configuration. So if you don't want to use an extension like Foxy proxy, you can just make sure to go in here and set that manual and give it your 127.0.0.1 on port 80 to 80. That, that's the default settings for using Burp Suite. And I click OK, but I'm going to use the system settings. I'll just cancel out of here. And then I all I got to do, and if you want Foxy Proxy, of course, it's just a Google search away for Foxy Proxy. Of course, I'm using Firefox, and it's an add-on or extension, whatever you want to look for. And there you go. You click it, you hit it, you hit add. Mine says remove, obviously, because I have it installed already, but yours would say install. And then you would install it, and you would have it up here. And then to configure it, you just go to options. It takes you here. You go to proxy tabs, and then you add a proxy, right? You can give it the title. I'm going to call this one like Burp Suite, like so. Of course, it's a little, little rough for you to see. There we go. And then I will need to give it a host name, which is the actual IP address, which is 127.0.0.1. your local host IP. And then the port of 8080. You can choose a color. I'm feeling, I don't know, red today looks good. Why not hit select? And now it's ready, just so you can easily kind of see it. And save, right? Bada bing. And now when I go to Foxy Proxy, I should have this one called Burp Suite, which I do, right? I, I just label mine proxy on because I use different proxies, not just Burp Suite. So if I'm wanting to turn my proxy on, whatever one I'm using should be fine for that. If I needed one specifically for Burp Suite, I could do that. I can make another one for Zap. I can go on and so on and so forth. If I'm using other proxy type things, it works really well. So I highly recommend you install Foxy Proxy for this intensive purposes. Again, beginner friendly. I'm trying to give you some beginner information in this video. All right. So now uh, I don't need you and I don't need you, but what I will need to do is I will just close this and we will go, I'll just open a new tab. Let's just tab empty. I think, here we go. I'm gonna open Burp Suite. And if you're running Kali, any default install of Kali is gonna have Burp Suite. So you just type in Burp, click the thing and hit okay. And then we're just gonna click next and then click start Burp. It might tell you, it might even give you a warning like, hey, your Burp Suite is a little out of date. Do you wanna update, blah, blah, blah. You just kind of next your way through that. And from there, we're gonna hit that target tab and wow, this is a uh, <laughs> this is a obviously clean install. I'm going to make this a little easier. So you see, there's a settings button over here. Let me go to settings. I'm going to look for the user interface area, <laughs> and I'm going to make some changes because this is crazy. I'm going to look for display, and that's going to allow me to change to dark mode, which I like much better. Ah, my eyes, your eyes. <laughs> All our eyes are much better. I'm going to change the font size to something human readable. Let's try 16. Yeah, that should look a lot better for you. All right, that's good. And then I'm going to just kind of blow this up, make sure I don't have any save options. I think it just saves it by default. Yeah, there we go. Excellent. Now we can kind of see what is going on. So I'm under this target tab, but I need to get my browser hooked into by using Fo Foxy Proxy. I need to tell it, hey, I want you to turn my proxy on. The proxy is now on. So when I go here and I click this site, you'll notice I get this accept thing again. But now when I go over to uh, Burp Suite, you notice I've got things going on, right? I've got the Meta CTF stuff, but I'm looking for that cookie crackdown. I'm just going to right click on that and click add to scope and then click yes. And now it will only log. So basically it's just logging all the, the web requests that are being made from my browser through this. That's why the idea of proxy. So I'm sending it, I'm sending any information that my browser is trying to do to, to Burp Suite first. It's going, Hey, go to Burp Suite. Burp Suite's going to kind of look at all this stuff and give you the ability to fiddle with it and finagle with it if you like, and then send it on its way, right? A proxy, right? You, here, you hold this first and then you send it for me. You're doing things for me. But once, once it goes to Burp Suite, it allows Burp Suite to give you the option to see what's going on under the hood. All I did was click a link, and now let's do this. Let's go, let's go back. I'm gonna go to the proxy tab, 
and I'm going to go to HTTP history, right? This is the history of everything. And I'm going to, I'm going to clear this out. So I'm just going to right click and I'm going to clear my history and then I'm going to click yes. Yeah. I want it clear. Okay. And then I'm going to go back to our browser and I'm just going to refresh the page. Then let's go back to Burp Suite and you'll notice I've got a request. Yay. Right. It's intercepting those requests and it's also forwarding them along to where they're going. And that's why my browser experience looks normal. And if I click decline, that should, that might actually get me something as well, but it's all within that one. That was probably just some JavaScript of, of a pop-up. It's, it, it was all encompassed within this one request for cookie crackdown. And in here though, I should be able to, yep, right there. I'm going to, I'm going to highlight it. I'm going to, it has set cookie. Let's see if you can see this and I'll full screen for you. And there is the, the text that I highlighted to your left. And you notice it has that cookie there. Let me know that that cookie has been set. And it is in my request as well. It is right here. If I highlight this, you can see over here. It also shows me the cookie. So using something like Burp Suite would be a more professional way. I guess if you were doing like a web app pen test, this is a web application. So if you're learning about web app security, using something like Burp Suite would be uh, in the in the long run, a better way to go, even though you could totally and easily just use the dev tools like we saw before. Burp Suite's a cool tool. This is obviously just kind of very rudimentary, trying to get your feet wet, dip your toe in the water of, hmm, what's this Burp Suite thing? Obviously, there was a little bit to getting it set up, but hopefully you're you're like, hey, Burp Suite's not a big scary monster anymore. Maybe I could actually work with this thing and kind of explore how things go and find things like flags to solve problems on Meta CTF. And there you go, kids. Lots of fun. Like I said, beginner-friendly stuff. So don't feel bad if you're like, oh, this was th this. I've, I've never seen this stuff before. That's the idea. We want to make sure that everybody has some fun and learns a thing or two on the platform. That said, speaking of the platform, if you haven't signed up for Meta CTF, maybe you've just kind of found this video and thought it was interesting, go sign up, metactf.com, right? Get you a sign up. It's free. And then you can start playing along with us, having fun, learning about cybersecurity, hacking stuff. Really, really cool. Good time had by all. And of course, give them a like and a follow when it comes to their YouTube and their socials. If you would, and you found some uh, value out of this video, please do the same for Anti-Siphon Training. That's where I'm from. We kind of work with them. They work with us. We uh, have a really good symbiotic relationship and we want you to be a part of the fun. So definitely give us a like and subscribe and follow and all that other good stuff on all our socials here on YouTube. Whew. I feel like a real YouTuber every time I say that. And I say that every time I say that. This is a lot of fun. Thanks for watching everyone. Until next time, have a great day.